CNC router is a versatile machine that can be used by craft practitioners in many ways to produce components for their designs. There are many different types of CNC router available to the craft practitioner, from open source full sheet designs to small desktop models. You may utilize a light industrial free axis unit right up to heavy industrial five axis machines. Routers can be used to cut many different materials from polymers and industrial plastics, hard and soft timbers, to composites and soft metals such as aluminium and brass. Whichever tool you use, the basic functions are the same. In this video, we will be basing our examples on a light industrial quarter sheet free axis router, which is commonly used for cutting solid and sheet timber, but is also capable of machining aluminium and brass. Nearly all free axis CNC routers are comprised of the following key elements. Understanding how these systems work is key to your ability to design effectively to utilize technology in your design. The core of the machine is made up of a bed. This is the part of the machine which provides rigidity and allows the workpiece to be secured to it. It is important that the bed is rigid and level as this allows us to be confident of the location of the workpiece in space relative to the cutter. The workpiece is fixed to the bed and we move the cutter relative to the workpiece in the X, Y and Z directions. On most CNC routers, we have a sacrificial surface known as the spoil board. This is often a soft material, frequently MDF, which we do not mind if the cutting tool cuts into. For some operations, to get a clean cut on the back face of the material, we may want to ensure that the cutting tool plunges past the workpiece. Alternatively, we may want to secure the workpiece directly to the bed. In both scenarios, the spoil board allows us to do this without compromising the bed, as we can easily remove and resurface as required. Moving up from the spoil board, the next important component is the router gantry. On most free axis machines, this runs along the X axis and allows us to position the cutting tool in space. The height of the gantry is what gives our machine its ultimate cutting depth. This is calculated by the gap from the end of the cutting tool to the top of the spoil board. Sometimes when we are looking to machine parts, we may find that our design is incompatible with this, either as we do not have tools with long enough reach or because the thickness of the part is too much for us to machine successfully. In cases like this, we may decide to split our machining into multiple layers and then join them together after the machining has been completed. The gantry can be moved along the length of the machine in the Y axis. Often, this position is controlled by a lead screw that runs under the bed of the machine. To ensure that the movement of the gantry is always smooth, it will run on a series of precision slides. Mounted on the gantry is the cutter sled. The gantry allows the sled to move smoothly along the x-axis, again using low friction sliders for motion and a lead screw for control. Movement of the gantry and the sled allow the router to position the cutter head anywhere within the boundary of the machine within two dimensions. Mounted on the cutter sled is the cutter head, which at its most basic is a controllable high powered motor that can be used to spin the cutting tools. Using similar systems which allow the head to be positioned in the X and Y planes, the cutter head can move up and down along the vertical axis to position the tool anywhere within the boundaries of the Z axis. The Z axis will often have a significantly shorter range of travel to the X and Y axis of the machine, unlike in many 3D printers. The ultimate Z height can be defined as being from the top surface of the machine bed to the bottom of the tool holder when it is at its maximum height. However, this is often much reduced and depends greatly on the thickness of the spoil board and the length of the cutting tool used. The cutting tool is held in the cutter head with a tool holder, most often a collet, similar in design to those found on domestic and commercial hand routers. The collet allows for tools of multiple diameters to be interchanged easily. Some machines will have multiple tool holders that can be set up with the required tools before the beginning of the machine task and changed automatically during the program as required by the machine. Other machines, like the one we're focusing on, require a manual tool change. On the cutting head, you will often also find a connection for a vacuum hose that allows for dust and detritus from the cutting of the work to be removed from the area. To make this more effective, there is often also a removable dust shoe attached to the cutter head, which allows for a localized environment to be produced and make the extraction of dust and chips more efficient. 